Welcome everybody to the Lady Gunfighter Desolation Kickstarter launch event. That's right, in one half hour, we're launching our all new 42nd Kickstarter, Lady Gunfighter Desolation. I think we have a fun special show planned for you. But before we get into that, just want you to take a look at what we have around. This is some of the goods that we're going to be offering on our Kickstarter campaign in now less than one half hour. So if you have a Kickstarter account, that's great. If you're watching this and you do not have a Kickstarter account, please go to Kickstarter right now and sign up, enter your credit card information, all that good stuff, so that when we launch, you will be on equal footing with all of your friends and folks from around the world, and you can get exactly what it is that you want. So we'll, you go take a minute and do that, but please feast your eyes on some of the goods. I'm gonna give you some of the basics. Lady Gunfighter is a 48-page original graphic novel. It is co-written by myself and Mike McLean. It is illustrated by the returning champion, Joel Gomez. People be asking, where's that Joel Gomez? This is where Joel Gomez has been. It is colored by Hedwin Zalvidar, and it is lettered by veteran letterer Marshall Dillon, the man who has lettered all 42 of Coffin Comics' original stories and Tales of the Coffinverse. So, again, here we see some of the wares that we're going to be offering you during the course of this campaign. Different editions, our Premier Edition, our Joel Gomez Edition, the new Sundown Edition, Jewel Edition, Supernatural Edition, Holofoil Edition, Mega Foil Edition, even a Hardcover Edition, and Heavy Metal Edition. This is featuring artwork by many contributors known to fiends of Coffin Comics, including great artists like Diego Bernard, Joel Gomez himself, and some newcomers as well. Sia Um also, Sun K, Matt Nierhoff, the wonderful and magnetic Monty Moore, and even our legend artists like Eric Basildua, Basil the one and only Ebas, and Mike Diodato Jr and others. Oh yeah, I mean, how can I forget James O'Barr? So exciting to always get a James O'Barr cover. Absolutely a miraculous situation. So these are some of the wares. Now we do have a preview going right now and also a pre-launch sign up, which you're welcome to go do. And hopefully you've scrolled some of the things that might be of interest to you, including some of the ultra rare materials, including our uh, mega VIP set, which includes beautiful handcrafted editions with colors that are no two alike. Now, this is also an interactive launch party, launch event. So if you have some questions, you are welcome to ask. We'll pull them up on the screen so you can get you some answers. So the other thing I'd like to bring to your attention too, as many of you know, I'm actually a 50, almost a 50 year veteran of collecting comics. And I do like Western comics. So for fun, I brought out some of the ones that I enjoy. Um, gosh, this is only a tip of the iceberg, but one of the fun things we noticed about Western comics is most of them are named Kid, Two Gun Kid, Kid Colt Outlaw, Ringo Kid, Rawhide Kid, Dakota Kid, Kid Colt, Two Gun Kid, a lot of kids, but they're a lot of fun. Um, I'll bring this one to your attention, Johnny Thunder by DC Comics. I believe that's an Alex Toth cover. And this is just the coolest design ever. This Knight Rider by Marvel Comics back in the day. So kind of coming from a fun place where we love and adore Westerns. Uh, grew up on them myself. But it is Coffin style, so we wanted to make them supernatural. Well, I thought for this particular campaign event, we wanted to make it extra special. So there's a couple of guys here, one of which we really haven't heard from for a while. Like, where is that Joel Gomez guy? I don't know, but wouldn't that be cool if we could bring someone like Joel Gomez to be live? Without further ado, let me please introduce you the creators on Lady Gunfighter, Mike McLean, and the one and only Joel Gomez. Hey, everybody! Hey, everybody. Guys, 
Uh, let's talk a little bit right off the bat about the origins. Uh, yeah, Mike, yeah. would you mind telling people the story of Gunfighter? Sure. Set in 1876, post-Civil War America, as a teenager, Eliza Ryan was Lady Gunslinger, star attraction of Winchester Willie's traveling Wild West show. But Eliza gave up her sharpshooting ways to become a loving wife and mother. Then came the fateful night of bloodshed and fire. Ten years later, Eliza dons the Lady Gunfighter moniker once again and journeys across the ultraviolet hellscape that is the Old West. A demonic revolver rides in her gun belt, a weapon of dark power that whispers to Lady Gunfighter in an ancient malevolent language. Cursed bullets and sharpshooting skills. Will cursed bullets and sharpshooting skills be enough to stop the man responsible for destroying Eliza's family, the infamous killer Jebediah Kane? You're going to have to read it to find out. That's right, everybody. You're going to have to read it to find out. But we're so happy to have Joel Gomez in the house. Woo -woo! Joel, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back in the fold here at Coffin. Got to tell you, it was really odd. Being on the outside looking into that last Kickstarter for La Huerta, Lady Death. I was like, oh, everybody's having all the fun. So I had to be back, but it was all in good uh, good purpose. I was busy with Lady Gunfighter. These guys had written a magnificent script. They put a lot of work into it, a lot of uh, ideas that just really unique and very much a coffin brand of a Western. So I was really excited to help bring that to life. Uh, but I'd love to, for them to share more about that with you guys so we can learn more about the story. So that's exactly what we're doing tonight. Uh, if you, uh, Jimmy Coffin, you go back a little bit, you're actually going to see that we've reskinned our production studio to actually have a Joel Gomez art gallery of original art from Lady Gunfighter. So let's take a look at some of this art and let's start right from over here. And guys, let's talk a little bit about the origin of even the idea of doing gunfighter. Do you remember, Mike, like what made us decide we wanted to do something like that? Yeah, I think there's something about Westerns and dark, malevolent Westerns that are in the zeitgeist right now. So Brian and I first concocted a script for Lady Gunfighter. And full disclosure, that's not the story you're going to read. That's because <laughs> even though it was a pretty good script, I thought it was pretty well done. We thought it was a little too lore heavy, too much plot. And we really wanted you to have that mysterious kind of Clint Eastwood, Sierra Leone kind of edge to it. So we, we just ripped it up and started on page one, right? Yeah. So the story that you see before you in Mr. Gomez's amazing artwork is a stripped down, more simple, but yet more mysterious version of the story in which a woman who has lost it all becomes a bounty hunter and rides across the almost post-apocalyptic style West um, in search of uh, search of people to, to take in as a, as, a, as a gunfighter and a bounty hunter. And then she happens upon people from her dark, violent past. I don't know if I want to give too much more. I wouldn't give away the story, but now that we're ruminating on the pages, Joel Gomez, would you mind coming over here and discuss with us? I see a difference between pages that are inked right. and pages that are penciled. What, what's going on there exactly? Well, in this kind of fashion, uh, I worked traditionally in pencils and inks, and uh, it was just kind of a unique twist. Brian and Mike had a clever idea for flashback sequences, and I wanted to honor the idea that they had for it. And I suggested to them maybe we could do like just straight pencils for some of the stuff. And I think it was going back and forth where we they were already considering something like that, something that would really distinguish the time frames between something that was a flashback and something that is current timeline in the story. Uh, so we really played that up, and I really wanted to honor. The, the vibe and the, the grittiness and the just the dirtiness of the story. Um, and I felt like doing it this way really allowed for a kind of a real kind of rugged look to the pages that added, I felt, a little more texture to the overall thing that I was getting from the vibe that, you know, Mike and Brian put together in this particular story. It's a, it's a pretty gritty story. I mean, I wanted to do it justice. Well, what I'm noticing right off the bat here is that Lady Gunfighter fires this demonic pistol, but the bullets themselves seem to move in its own way. And we actually have Lady Gunfighter on hand here. 
And Lady Gunfighter, would you mind demonstrating that pistol? And Mike and uh, Joel, can you please describe a little bit about the pistol and the, the supernatural element of the story while we uh, look at it in detail? Sure. The, the pistol itself is shrouded in mystery. We don't know exactly where we, it came from. There are rumors that it might have the steel used to make the pistol is a cursed element from the old world that came to the to the new world, to America, and was fashioned into these pistols. Um, they are cursed, but they also might have a demonic element to them because the bullets themselves almost seem to have a mind of their own. And we don't really know how much those bullets are affecting Lady Gunfighter's very soul every time she uses them. I love this idea of a supernatural power that comes with a cost. And in the face of this quest, it's slowly altering her in some sort of fashion. Let's continue to look at these gorgeous flashback pages. And Joel, if you had anything you wanted to say about this particular page without giving too much away. Yes, page 17, we get a little bit of a backstory to Eliza. Um, we reveal some nefarious looking guys on horseback in the first panel. And uh, the feeling that I got from the script uh, really kind of led to like, an iconic shot, kind of an ode to a lot of the westerns we see where a couple of badasses on horseback. Uh, so we focused in on that, and we quickly cut, a, cut away to a different scene, uh, revealing a very tragic moment uh, that plays a pivotal part in our story. And uh, all of that, again, we really worked out the idea of having a real different tone to what the other pages would be like in pencils and inks. Uh, so we really wanted to create a distinction between the history of what's happening now and what created that moment in the past. So it's something that was really uniquely found already in the script. So I just was doing my best to bring it to life. Well, we have a question. Uh, let's pull up this question from Matthew Stapleton. He asks, are the revolvers La Muerta Brandish in Demonic Omens, and that the same as Lady Gunfighter. We'll let Mike take that one. One more, if you could repeat the question one more time. I'm not sure I got it. Are the revolvers? Are the revolvers oh. La Muerta Brandish in Demonic Omens, which is out now, one and the same as Lady Gunfighter? Well, that is a great idea, and I might steal it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the bullets that you see in Demonic Omens, those come from Sun from Muerte. She uh, devised those bullets to give um, La Muerta a fighting chance against supernatural enemies. So, but maybe there could be a connection. You're, you're pretty sly in catching that thing that I put in there. We'll really do some sort of writer there. answer where we'll go, yeah, <laughs> yeah for yeah, sure, sure, sure yeah, yeah, sure. It will be. It will be it will That's be an absolutely. excellent idea. Well, let's continue. I noticed on this next page over here, um, as Lady Gunfighter uh, moves through the environment, she just right. encounters these atrocities. Now, again, Mike, let's talk about our time and our setting and what makes our story and how we choose to present it unique from other Westerns. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely post-Civil War um, about... 10 to 15 years after the, the Civil War. And the West, it, it's, it's not an idyllic idea of the West. It is really um, almost a post-apocalyptic, probably in its own way, more real, a more realistic vision of the West than the American government was kind of spreading to the settlers that would, that would venture out. So the West is seen almost as hell to Lady gunfighter and at first she does not want to get it. Um, so that that's kind of like the natural environment that we see and the further she travels west the darker it gets so it, it's really the, the setting and Joel as, as anybody that follows Joel's work knows just does such a phenomenal job creating mood and atmosphere and in these pages, it's no different than what he achieved in, in La Muerta. Um, he, really, he really does a great job of, of creating this kind of horrific landscape that we're both familiar with from the old movies, and it's, it's also something kind of new. So we have another question we'd like to pull up, and this one is from Solomon. And here's the question, and feel free to 
watch Lady Gunfighter, cameraman. Is Lady Gunfighter a hero or an anti-hero? Yes. <laughs> yes. No single, uh, and Mike, can you take that one? Well, I, I guess it depends on your point of view. She is a bounty hunter in the beginning of the story. And a bounty hunter works for bounties. She's bringing people in. In fact, one of the first people she bring, she's going to bring in is somebody who's not really that bad of a guy. So um, I think that answers a little bit of your question. She That puts her on the anti-hero. But maybe through the story, she might prove to be a little more of a hero. We'll have to see. We will. Now, I also want to give a major shout out to Mike Madigan, Matthew Stapleton, who's watching, and some other folks. That's Kristen C., Matt S., Steve King, Solomon, Kristen C. So thank you so much for listening. Um, let's see here. Let's continue to check out the art. And let's take a look at some of the color art. And let's start from the beginning. I would like to get some of Joel Gomez's impressions of the Hedwin Zalbadar art, color art. Yeah, honestly, uh, I just recently seen all of the entire book and it's or the entirety of the book colored. I was really blown away with the atmosphere that uh, Hedwin created with the look of my line art. It's always a, a dance to see. It's a, you know, kind of uh, somebody zigs and you zag and how he riffed on what I created was really awesome. It was kind of a, it was a symphony, you know, he really brought a lot of energy and mood to the pages like this, this page specifically. Oh my gosh. Like look at the tone and look at the, he like made my fire so fire. Uh, it looks really cool. Um, just really ambient kind of a vibe to it that adds so much of the tone of this story to it. I could not have expected it. I look forward to you know working with him again. Possibly, uh, we'll see what uh, what how things unfold. But so far, the way the book looks, it really adds a lot of the flavor that I kind of was shooting for with the vibe of these pages and. It looks great. It looks phenomenal. I'm excited about everybody to check out this book. There's so many more pages that are colored that have so much amazing scenery to it that aren't featured here. You guys have to just check it out. Well, can't give it all away, Joel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, folks, here we are about 12 minutes before we launch this Kickstarter. We will kind of go live over here, but we have uh, over here the team, uh, the retraining team over there, Nick G., we call him pajama party. Yes, Nick is <laughs> What pajama party? Nick? Well, I'm just totally teasing, Nick. We uh, we we wound up closing our La Muerta Lady Death Kickstarter campaign at 5 a.m. instead of 5 p.m. And once you set something in Kickstarter, you can't go back. Yeah, I even asked La Muerta. You told me no. So we're set to close this campaign. This one really does end at 5 p.m. Yes. About 30 I days promise. from now. Right on. Uh, well, it's also wonderful. We're joined here tonight by La Presidenta of Coffin Ooh. Comics. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank and you of course, me. you're very welcome. Uh, editor Anya Beam in the house. Woo! Angel Gomez, significant other. Beth Hey! Operating the wheels of steel over here is Chief. Yeah. Right, so holy mackerel, 11 minutes to go. This is our 42nd campaign. A couple of the things that you should know about Lady Gunfighter is that we are hard at work on chapter two for June 2025. What page are you on? I'm currently on page 45 Whoa. of a 40 Whoa. page script. So, uh, and yeah, I, honestly, I, I hate to say it. It's so much better than this part. You can't wait to see it. It's a nuts. It's, nuts. it's like a backhanded compliment. No, no. This is this is only the tip of the iceberg. There's well, so much the beginning more. of the story. Right. There's yeah. more action and stuff. Right. These these guys are insane. You should see what they built. It's just they're not even showing you the engine yet. This thing is nuts. It keeps going on and on. I just wish there was so much more Lady Gunfighter for everyone to see. Well, we're hoping that if you like this chapter and the next chapter, that we, look, the format of this campaign is what Coffin Comics calls Quick Strike. And that means it's a uh, comics, cards, prints. Hmm. If people like this campaign and it's successful, we'll consider on Chapter 2, June of 2025, adding things like apparel, 
back patches, mm. maybe a coin designed by Joel Ooh. Gomez. Ooh. That coin, would be amazing. Coin. 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 <laughs> that would be really cool. Yeah. What's that? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minute mark. Uh, what else is there to say about that? Well, again, I'd like to remind people who joined recently, if you have not, please sign up for a Kickstarter account. If you do not have one, get up there into your name, information, credit card information. That way you're ready to go. Here's a question. From Matt. Matt wants to know, does this story take place in the past of Lady Death's universe? Or is this an alternative universe? That is a very good question. It's such a good question. That is a very good question. Well, I don't want to give too much away because then you have <laughs> yourself into a storyline. Yeah. But we do have some clues into the Comforters. Yeah. And in the last couple Lady Death storylines where Lady Gunfighter is among... Uh, yeah, we had a storyline called Sacrificial Annihilation and Lady Gunfighter made her first appearance there. And we, uh, during that same time, we released a one-shot anthology oh. called Tales of the Coffin Verse. Right. And there was a Lady Gunfighter That's story right. in there and that should give you some clues. So each individual title of Coffin Comics stands on its own, of course, but we encourage everybody to collect the entire storyline. That way you're getting an entire sense of the universe. So right now that's 42 different stories on average, at least 48 pages, some as much as 64 pages. Yeah. So it's a whole bunch of fun stuff to read and get caught up. Long time readers will know that we do Easter eggs and we foreshadow stuff that we pay off years later. Yeah. So it is standalone stories that do have an overall inside an overall cohesive universe. Mm. Let's get back to the art, shall we? So yeah. let's take a, Joel, let's uh, pick a page and let's discuss it. Uh, let's see here. Oh, you know what? Here we go. This page here, page 22. So here was an interesting page that Mike had set up. Uh, it kind of revealed a little bit of history that was going on at the time with some tribes, some Indian tribes that were being decimated. Uh, and he kind of hinted at the history of just our American history. And... Uh, it's kind of what makes the story so unique is that uh, the way Mike and Brian have weaved things into the storyline that aren't directly fact, but they add so much of a tinge of flavor to this story. And uh, they really touch on some really poignant moments in our history that make this story so much darker and grittier. Uh, these guys, they really put a lot of thought into these ideas. And it, it's what really compelled me to try my hardest on these pages. Uh, there was something just really unique about the script and the way that they've kind of put it together. You could tell that they had worked this out a couple of times or something. It reminded me of the first time I read the La Muerta uh, original script. That It was just so tight, and it felt like a movie just by reading it. I felt the same way about this particular script. And again, that's why I was talking about that second part. Don't tell these guys, but that second part is so nuts because they, these guys, they weave so much into it. It's bonkers. But anyway, this story, it gives you a feeling of that and what these guys do. And I wanted to do my best to honor their efforts because it's such a badass story about it. Such a badass lady. I love that kind of shit. These guys pull it off like no other. Well, oh, thanks, man. Okay, cool. I'm just I'll be in my trailer. Right on. Thanks. <laughs> I, I do want to say you want to buy this one though. <laughs> you, know, this absolutely. Absolutely. you want you absolutely. need to buy this one. Yeah. one. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I would say too, it's like um, chapter one and two form a cohesive story, right? right. So right. chapter one is the first half. Right. And then chapter two, certainly like a lot of motion pictures or storylines, there's a there's a humongous payoff, of course, yeah. but it really won't have the uh, emotion or gravitas if you don't read chapter one. But I assure you, chapter one has plenty of action, plenty of bloodshed, oh, plenty absolutely. of all of that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, let's see here. So we have about six minutes until we launch the campaign. I do see some questions. Um, someone asked about seeing a preview. I think we don't have a preview up at this exact moment. That's okay. We're going to go live shortly. And Chaz, you'll be able to get kind of caught up. So sorry about that, but you will get caught up. I do want to bring to attention another page that I find to be very evocative by Joel. And let's talk about this particular page with the uh, tones on it. Yeah, so this is, uh, I started playing around with uh, screen tones. It was just something that I thought would help add a little bit of kind of a mood to the story. And I don't know why, but for whatever reason, in this part of the script, we started getting real strong feelings of the darker edges of this society or this world. And so I really wanted to start building that up and start giving you the feeling that 
we're moving further west to the nittier and grittier parts of this kind of world. And uh, the way Mike had written it and the way Brian had described it, I just wanted to create that, like we're starting to get into the depths, into the bowels of this American history, at least in this story. Um, so in the first parts of the pages, you see some like kind of really, I don't know, desolate situations. Uh, Lady Gunfighter taking off. It's like really nice on the first panel. And then the second panel, she's with a, a band of people who look like they're kind of a ragtag, worn, torn group of folks. And it just keeps getting worse. And at the end of the page, she's kind of just sitting back and revealing like, well, or she's reveling in the idea of like, all right, it's only going to get worse. I better buckle up and get uh, saddled in. So, and again, that's just the tone that these guys create. It's just like a, it's like a melodic thing. And I just enjoy, you know, just drawing away at it. And uh, it's been a fun ride. I look forward to what people are, are going to say about this book. It's only the beginning. Uh, I can't wait for you guys to see this whole thing colored. It looks sick. It looks so sick. So Joel, let me ask you one other question while we're talking. And I want to acknowledge that Matthew Stapleton said that we, that our stream got kicked off of YouTube for some sort of violation. What? What? We're trying to understand what that might be. Maybe the uh, toy gun that uh, uh, Lady Gunfighter has. I'm not quite sure. It is a prop. We're just a character. Uh, we don't know, but we'll say. What I would like to ask, though, is um, what is it like to work on something almost in near solitude for about a year? What's your process? What's your daily process like, Joel Gomez? Oh, man, it's uh, it's uh, it's fun. It's crazy. It's exciting. It's weird. It's sad, you know, because uh, <laughs> you're, you're sitting in the I'm chained to a table. Uh, I interact with all you guys, uh, you know, getting getting to talk to interact with people in the Sword Nation and the Facebook page and all that. It kind of rejuvenates me being able to interact with Brian and Mike it really helps. Uh, but a lot of times you have to have faith in the system and the ideas that these guys are presenting and you want to make it as cool as possible. And so every time I turn in batches of pages, I I'll, I'll share it with them and the feedback I get is what helps me out. But as most of you know, when I'm drawing my original pages, if you've ever seen them in person, there's all these patches and these little pieces that are like cut out and repasted on there. And that's because I'm always reworking it. My philosophy is, is can it be better? And if it is, that's what we're going to do because that's the story you deserve. That's the way they wrote it. And that's what it needs to be. And I just don't know any other way. And so it's a really relieving feeling when people enjoy it. Folks, we're at a two minute warning. Uh, before we do our launch, I want you guys to feast your eyes on the cool design of Lady Gunfighter Ooh. by Brie. The character is a woman of few words. Brie worked overtime to bring Gunfighter to life, her demonic pistol. The likeness is absolutely incredible. Hell yeah. We really appreciate working with her and uh, the, just a spectacular job of bringing gunfighters alive. Folks, we are inside two minutes. I don't know how we're going to make that go live, but we're going to. Um, Nick, you're going to be in charge when we get to one minute, and then we're going to stage over here. Oh, 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 oh never mind. <laughs> do what you got to do, Nick. Yep, we are now one minute. One, one minute. minute. Guys, guys want to hang out over here. We'll, while down, we'll count down for 15. Okay, we're gonna count down for 15, everybody hop on in. Oh boy. Kickstarter comes down to one little tiny button. It all comes down to the one. Just press it. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Just do it, do it now. This is uh, Kickstarter number 42. Wanna thank wow. everybody in advance for your support of Coffin Comics through Thick and Thin. I want to do a special acknowledgement and shout out in memoriam to Super Fiend Jennifer Nimitz, we're going to dedicate this campaign to you. Today was your memorial, and we are just sick to death that you passed suddenly. But uh, big up to big up to Jennifer. Ten, nine, nine eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Go! It still says that. It's, yeah, yeah, there's always we're live. Okay. Go, go, go. There we go. We're live. All right, everybody. We're live. We're live. We're going to see what that's all about. Here's like the, the hairy part. Hairy. 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 There we go. We're going to dial it. We got a dollar. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Heck yeah, fourteen dollars. Yeah, there we go. go. Nice, thank you. So, thank you uh, Lady Gunfighter will be a thirty-day campaign, like other Coffin Comics campaigns. We'll end it on a Friday at six p.m. Wherever you are, we go by Arizona time. And uh, yeah, here we go. It's always kind of hairy. Yeah, 5 p.m. actually. Ends up 5 p.m.? Friday. Friday at 5 p.m. That's right. 5, 5, 5 a.m.? 5 p.m. <laughs> For the rest of your life. <laughs> <Friday. Yeah. laughs> oh, we're getting oh, wow. out oh, almost. Nice. Nice. Well, also, now that we're launched, I do want to introduce Bree. Thank you so much, Bree, for coming yeah. on board as hey. Gunfighter. Hey. I don't know if there's anything you want to say to the people, it's optional. <laughs> no, I just, I had like a ton of fun working on this. The art that I was working on from the archive was beautiful. I was like zooming in this far, trying to get the details right. And it was just this, I think, one of the most fun I've had putting together a costume because I just really liked all the little details in this. Nice. Looks they awesome. were cohesive. It, it made sense. Big up. Thank you so much. Beautiful. And of course, it's another completely impractical costume from Coffin Comics. She, a lot of the story does take place, you know, in the desert. It's a questing kind of story. <laughs> All black. Right? All black. And it looks like we hit our initial goal. Yeah. No, okay, not yet. Oh, 15,000. I'm sorry. Traditional. The traditional 15. <laughs> Cosplay was so great. You too thought it was uh, you're a real gunfighter. So, yeah. Was that what it was? I, I, I don't understand. That. I don't know why exactly it got kicked off. You know, because I'd imagine there's a lot of action, <laughs> uh, movie previews and stuff that have gone play. So maybe we don't really know why we got kicked off, but who knows? I just think we were too awesome. Yeah. That's it. We're, we're gonna go back over awesome. here. I'm gonna see if uh, we're so awesome. There's uh, any questions? Let's see here. Matthew, does anyone here? Ah, uh, yes. The Enrico Morion. Yeah, here we are, man. Getting close to goal. We're only a couple minutes into the campaign. Uh, Thank all the backers on this one. Very much. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Caitlin, thank you. Kristen, thank you. Nicole, thank you. Tim, Scott, no. Scott! 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 <laughs> Wow, Kristen, quick draw backer number one. Oh, there it is. Yes. Oh. Backer number 13. That's awesome. Oh, awesome. Lucky 13. Lucky 13. Lucky 13. Number 32. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Well, yeah, we do hope that we hit our goals on this one so we can bring you a chapter number two. <laughs> if you guys have any questions out there, let us know. Um, anyone have any? Uh, Joel, what would you like to say to the people? It's been a while. It's it's been a while. Thanks for having me back. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't know what I did. I love you guys. You guys are the best. Thanks. I, I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. No, honestly, <laughs> everyone everyone knows. I mean, I just uh, given the opportunity. I was like given the chance to go back to La Muerta, which is she's my gal. You know that. Um, but the story these guys crafted, I had to do it. It was such a such a cool thing, and I was just feeling it at the moment. I loved what they had done, and I didn't want to have to just put it down to come back to it later, and. Um, Everything about why this story was so unique is uh, what I think is going to make it a hit. And I think you guys have to check it out. This, I, I was just impressed. It reminded me, again, it reminded me of the, the La Muerta, the very first chapter, and how tight it was and how unique of a feeling. It just read like a movie. And uh, I just wanted to fulfill that whole idea while I had it in my head. It's so exciting. This, this book's so cool. It introduces a character that's just... She's such a badass. She's so just chill. Uh, I love it. I love everything these guys have done. And uh, I'm just happy to be a part of this with them. So thank you for being there for us. We are so close to goal. It's only a couple of minutes into the campaign. Four minutes into the campaign. Can we do it? We're getting close. I don't know. Close. Very close. Very close. Oh, oh, no. No. Thank you for making that happen. Thank you, everybody. Okay. I hope you like some of the goodies that we're presenting to you and some of the cool artwork. There's a collectible element to what we do, but it's also at the heart of it is a story. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, for today's launch event, is there anything anyone would like to say? Mike McLean. Um, I had such a great time working on this with Brian and, and Joel, and it was so much fun. The dialogue just kind of rolled off the tongue onto the page. It was a, so much fun to write. So I think you'll really enjoy it. But as always, I got to 
big ups to everybody out there that are backing and, and tell a friend and let them know that you're back. I really appreciate it. We can't do this without you. So thank you as always. Right on. Anyone else here? Francisca? Yeah, I want to just say thank you for the opportunity to let us tell you guys new stories. It's, yeah, I like um, that too. I don't, it's just such a non-religious blessing to be able to have this amazing group of writers and artists and just this whole great team and to create new stories and get them out to you. And then you guys back us and you receive those stories and then you enjoy those stories. So like Mike said, if you can share with a friend and let them know we've got a new story out, that'd be amazing. Thank you. And I love you. Nick G, anything you want to say? Um, as always, thank you guys. You guys, um, you guys make everything we do possible. And I, I really mean that. You guys really do. Like we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. So thank you. Bree, anything else you want to say to the people? Yes, I want to tell them that I was not slacking this time. Yeah! <laughs> right on, nice. Wait, did you okay. just get coined? Oh, did I just oh, get coined? Oh, wait a minute. Bree just coined everybody. Just coined. I know. I'm just... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> then we got the sword. Yes. <laughs> can't even can't get away from it even nah, nah. here in the production <laughs> coffin studio <laughs> well i think for <laughs> friends do it like duck face coin that's my matthew stapleton matthew stapleton duck face coin right on all right everybody let's have a lady gunfighter let's have joel and mike come on together Come on. <laughs> Folks, we've just begun. It's less than five minutes into the campaign, and 111 phenomenal people, 113, have backed this campaign. Thank you. We do ask you to please share this campaign with someone who might like it. A supernatural Western. It's kind of different in the marketplace. I know there's a couple other ones out there, but check this one out. I want to thank you so much for attending our launch event. Please do like, share, you know, all that good stuff. And uh, all I want to say is uh, you guys have been great. We've been the Coffin Comics crew. Holler at you later. Hey, everybody. This is veteran comic book creator Brian Polito. We're here to ask for your support in bringing our all-new Supernatural Western to life. I'm talking about a 48-page original graphic novel entitled... Lady Gunfighter, Desolation. Set in the eerie ruins of post-Civil War America, Eliza Ryan thought she'd never pick up a gun again. As a teenager, she was Lady Gunfighter, star attraction of Winchester Willie's Traveling Wild West show. But Eliza gave up her sharpshooting ways to become a loving wife and mother. Then came that fateful night of bloodshed and fire. Ten years later, Eliza dons the Lady Gunfighter moniker once again, in journeys across the ultra-violent hellscape that is the Old West. She no longer performs trick shots for adoring crowds. Now she shoots to kill, a cold-hearted bounty hunter harboring a shadowy secret. A demonic revolver rides in her gun belt, a weapon of dark power that whispers to Lady Gunfighter in an ancient, malevolent language. But will cursed bullets and sharpshooting skills be enough to stop the man responsible for destroying Eliza's family, the infamous killer? Jebediah Kane. Helping me bring this dark tale to life is co-writer Mike McLean, illustrator Joel Gomez, colorist Hedwin Zalvador, and veteran letterer Marshall Dillon. And look, this project is done. We just got a print, but I need your help to bring this story to life. Please pledge now and spread the word. Thank you so much, everybody.